I'm Dr. Josh Gregan, rural family physician and past president of Doctors of BC. And my question is, what does your party intend to do to help healthcare in rural British Columbia, including emergency rooms, hospitals, clinics, and ultimately rural patients? I'm really uh, proud of the work that we've done with Doctors of BC to make sure that we're finally turning the corner on getting British Columbians access to a family doctor or nurse practitioner. One of the most stubborn uh, problems, you know, when, when the Liberals promised a GP for me when John Rustad was in government in 2015 or 2010, when they finished that program in 2015 and 190,000 fewer people had a family doctor, uh, we don't want that situation. So we, uh, through our agreement with Doctors of BC and Family Doctors, have 250,000 people now connected with a family physician, and uh, we're connecting another 160,000 people in the next six months. And we actually see by the end of 2025 through the Health Connect Registry, every British Columbian having access to that primary care that they need. A really stubborn issue though, regardless of, uh, of uh, where you are in the province, is emergency room staffing. Making sure that emergency rooms are properly staffed to meet the demands of British Columbians and to support uh, those hardworking front, uh, frontline healthcare workers in our emergency rooms is so central. We've actually uh, uh, faced uh, closures of rural emergency rooms, which should never happen. Uh, regardless of where people are in the province, they should be able to rely on the emergency room services that are available. So we're going to get rid of the red tape around whether or not a doctor can practice in one facility or another. If you're qualified to practice in British Columbia in an emergency room, you should be able to provide that care in different parts of the province. We're going to train up the medical professionals we need to ensure our, our uh, emergency rooms are well staffed. And we'll work closely with the physicians, uh, with the nurses providing the care to make sure we realize our shared goal of ensuring that you have the working conditions you need to make sure that every British Columbian gets the care that they deserve. This is a huge issue, obviously. One of the things that we'll look at is we will pay for training for doctor, for some doctors and nurses, and in return, ask for a five-year commitment to service and underserviced communities. Particularly these communities where we've had ER closures on a regular basis, we need to be able to get the professionals in there to be able to keep these things, these facilities open. So this is going to be a huge focus for us as government in terms of how we make sure these professionals can practice, uh, you know, across the province. <clears throat> but once again, it's about changing the model. Today, uh, with the Health Professionals and Occupation Act, with so many things that are going on uh, in our healthcare system, I'm hearing from more and more doctors that they're burnt out and they want to leave British Columbia. I'm hearing from many nurses that they want to leave, they're burnt out. We need to change the model so that we can show that there is a better way to be able to deliver healthcare services in British Columbia, and it'll give us a much better opportunity to be able to, like I say, attract and retain those professionals we have, and then through uh, incentives, trying to make sure that we have those professionals being able to deliver services right across this province, especially in small and rural communities. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words on this today. In 2022, Adam Olson, the MLA for Saanich North and the Islands, and I went around to rural communities and spent a lot of time talking to doctors and patients and learning about what the impediments to rural health care. We do not have an equitable health care system in BC because people in rural communities do not have the level of service that people in urban centers have. So we have to be strong advocates for rural health care. Community health centers is one way to improve rural health care. We need the rural retention uh, program to be focused on keeping doctors and keeping health care professionals in rural communities. And then we have to look at the bigger picture, at things like equitable care. Women should be able to give birth close to where they live. And in this province, far too many women have to travel a long ways to be able to just give birth. And when people have to travel, we should consider the cost that is uh, on them. So travel costs, accommodation costs, really shouldn't be a barrier for people accessing healthcare in this province and it should be equitable. And I'll end on this. Let's create the conditions where people stay healthy. And that is a public health approach to all policy. That's building communities that are healthy. That's investing in, in clean energy. That's making sure that we are not, as a government, uh, putting our money and energy and resources towards things that make our communities less healthy. And so let's have a whole of province approach to keeping people healthy and to ensuring that doctors are right alongside the decision-making when it comes to healthcare in this province.